A mongoose bike will bring out your adventurous side with every pedal. Jump on the 26-inch men's hitch fat tire bike and explore challenging trails with gusto. This all-terrain bike is tons of fun and lets you ride on dirt, street, sand, or snow like never before. It's designed with a steel mountain fat tire style frame for superb durability. Respond quickly to changes on the trail with the easy to use seven speed twist shifters. Powerful front and rear disc brakes provide added peace of mind when you're making sudden stops and taking on steep hills. For traction and stability on unpaved surfaces, it's thick four inch knobby tires and sturdy drilled alloy rims really deliver. There are even colored rim inserts for bold style. The hitch is suitable for riders between 5 foot 3 inches and 6 foot 2 inches. Get ready for the ride of your life. There's nothing you can't do on a mongoose. On a mongoose bike, your greatest adventure is always around the next corner. The 20 inch boys Kong fat tire bike gives young riders the freedom to really let loose and explore. He'll have no trouble navigating trails and more challenging snowy or sandy surfaces on this bike. It features a steel mountain fat tire style frame for excellent durability. The seven speed twist shifters are super easy to use and provide a custom riding experience. Negotiating sharp turns, steep hills and sudden stops is no problem thanks to powerful front and rear disc brakes. This bike is equipped with four inch fat knobby tires for traction, stability and bold attitude. Drilled alloy rims with a colored insert as well as a coordinating seat let him cruise in style. The Kong is suitable for riders 4 to 5 feet tall and ages 7 to 13 years old. Get him ready for the ride of his life. There's nothing you can't do on a mongoose. A mongoose bicycle will bring out your adventurous side with every pedal. It's time to elevate your ride. Trails, sand, snow. The trickier the terrain, the more fun you'll have on this Dolomite fat tire bike. Seven speed twist shifters and a Shimano rear derailleur offer ultra smooth gear transitions. And when you're out on the trails, the bike's front and rear disc brakes provide swift stopping power. You'll enjoy year-round riding thanks to the durable mountain bike frame. The four-inch wide super-sized knobby tires let you conquer challenging terrain including snow-covered surfaces. The fat tires roll on wide alloy rims which are both lightweight and extremely durable. This versatile ride is also outfitted with a threadless headset and a strong three-piece crank for simplified maintenance. Plus, the sport seat delivers complete comfort. Designed with 26-inch wheels, the Dolomite best fits adult riders approximately 5 foot 6 inches to 6 feet tall. Get ready for the ride of your life. There's nothing you can't do on a mongoose. A mongoose bicycle will bring out your adventurous side with every pedal. Glide over sand, dirt, and snow with the Malice by Mongoose. Built with four and a quarter inch tires on a super-sized beach cruiser frame, this bike features plenty of clearance to make it rideable on virtually any terrain. The Malice has seven speeds with a Shimano rear derailleur for smooth gear changes, as well as front and rear disc brakes for secure stopping power. Designed with 26 inch wheels, this bike fits riders five feet four inches to six feet two inches tall. Fat tires are all the rage and the Malice is a great bike to add to your stable. Get out there and have a little fun. It's time to elevate your ride with the Malice by Mongoose.
Welcome back to the All Bike Update. I'm your host, Mitch Hackleman, and today we are going to be comparing the Waki X3 Pro 2020 model versus the brand new 2021 model. Visually, one of the biggest changes between the 2020 model and the 2021 model is this seamless weld design. So with the other one, where all the welds were, you could kind of see you know, where the welds were, uh, which isn't a huge deal, but it does look a little bit cheaper than their new revamped version where they've got all of these welds and they're covered up so it almost looks like everything is kind of this one giant piece. Um, really smooths it out, really adds a lot to the visual appeal. One of the other things you may have noticed is the price has gone up. So with the 2020 model, it was anywhere between 1600 to 1800 depending on where you got it. And with this new 2021 model, the price is right there at the 2K mark. So when we're looking at factors that might cause a price increase on this bike, we do have these bigger, beefier fenders here and the rack. Now, I'm a big fan of these fenders. They are plastic, but they're like a thicker plastic, so they've got a little bit of play to them, but they stay where they need to stay. And when compared with a bunch of those cheaper metal fenders that we see, I really think this is the way to go. Now, with the rack, I really like the rack. The rack is actually pretty wide. It's about... Ooh, about six inches or so, six and a half inches across. Um, not the widest rack out there, but it does give you quite a bit of surface area to tie things down on. When I was coming over here to film this comparison video, I had all my gear strapped down to it. I had a pannier bag in the back with my camera and some accessories. I've also got my tripod strapped down on it and my slider strapped down on it. And the nice thing about that is I was able to get all that stuff on there, still have a really nice balance to the bike, and didn't even notice that I had that stuff on the back when I was riding over here. So for me, probably one of the best additions is this rack and the new fenders. Another new feature to the Waki X3 Pro is the addition of a cruise control. We didn't have that in the previous model, and some people like that, some people don't. Personally, that's probably something I would not have on the bike, because sometimes you're going and then you want to let off and it keeps going, and there's that little bit of, whoa, whoa. But if that's what you're into, this new 2021 model also has that cruise control in there. The 2021 model also has a brand new top speed of 28 miles per hour. And when you compare it to the 2020, the top speed there was 31 miles per hour. And the issue with that is in some places, vehicles that could go over that certain miles per hour, in most places it's 28, it takes it out of that class three e-bike category and puts it into something else. Now, you gotta check your local rules and regulations because they differ kind of all over the place, um, even in the United States, but especially when you're looking at other countries and places like that, you have to know your local regulations as far as what you're allowed to do um, and then make sure you're getting a bike that can do those things. We've also got an increased range on this bike. So with the 2020 model, we had a max range of about 50 miles per hour, and that was, you know, best case scenario, maybe getting into a little bit of that WPOS technology that they have in this bike. And with the 2021 model, we have got a max range of 60 miles. Now, there's a lot of things that are similar about this bike, and I don't know if they've changed enough to warrant the extra 10 miles that they're giving it, but, you know, with the new controller kind of bringing us under to that class three, maybe that is possible. One of the additions to the 2021 model when compared with most of the 2020 models is we were having some issues when we reviewed the 2020 model initially where the battery was rattling inside of the down tube here. And what we were able to do was talk with Waki and they were able to get with their manufacturer and fix that problem. So they made the down tube just a little bit smaller and they also gave us some additional foam on the outside of this battery to make sure that the battery fits in there really nice and snug. And I've taken it in and out a couple times and it is very snug. One of the other fun things that you'll notice with the 2021 model is we now have the addition of this desert tan color that you can see behind me here. Um, I believe towards the end of the 2020 line, they had some that were in this desert tan, but now it's a staple color and that has four different colors you can choose from, being green, black, gray, and now this desert tan. One of the biggest changes to the 2021 model is the increase from 160 millimeter disc brakes to these bigger 180 millimeter disc brakes. Now, we did used to have Tetro, which was nice. We like to look down and see those name brands. Um, but we have this XOD one, and from a functionality standpoint, they function well. They stop the bike on a dime. We do a couple braking tests in the in-depth review. Really, my only complaint as far as the XOD is compared to the Tetros, on this bike up here with the brake levers, we've got this bolt that sticks out a little bit. We talked about some fixes for that in the in-depth review, so I'll link to that down below. But that's just one of my complaints as far as these brakes go. With the 2020 model, we had this 
thinner style gel filled saddle which was pretty nice um, but with this one it's actually increased in size in the back so it's nice and fatter in the back and then it tapers off to a point really quickly allowing our legs to kind of come over and get down there and do what uh, what our legs need to do we still do have the inclusion of this shim for the seat post to work, which was one of my complaints with the 2020 model. With the 2021 model, we still have that, but you know maybe 2022, we'll see a shimless design here. One of the other differences that we measured was the standover height on this bike. It used to be right at 33 inches, and right now it's sitting about 31 inches. Now, 31 inches is still quite a standover height, and this is really designed for those medium height to larger riders. On the 2021 model, we also have this new and improved display. Now the display functions pretty much the same as the old display. So if you're familiar with the 2020 model, this one is gonna be very similar. We do have the addition of this USB dongle here in the back, which I talked about and I really liked. Um, I would probably add some Velcro or something like that to make sure that that dongle was sticking to the back of the display there. So with this screen, it is a little bit wider. It seems like it's a little bit more brighter, a little bit crisper. Um, and it has this kind of cool curved design here on top. One of the things they implemented towards the end of the 2020 model run was an advanced features safety lock. So there's a couple different things you might want to change on the bike as far as pedal assist levels, you know, what levels do what. And in order to get into these advanced settings, you have to go through a little bit of a process. And we talk about it in the in-depth review. I'll put a link down to that below. So if you're having issues getting into the advanced settings, um, you can check out that video. There is timestamps, um, so you can jump right to it. Something you 2020 owners may have experienced is the brake levers were on the other side than you may have been used to. Now with the 2021 model, they flopped it. So now the front brake is on the left side and the rear brake is on the right side. All right, guys, that is going to do it for our comparison video of the 2020 and 2021 Walkie X3 Pros. Let us know down below which changes you'd like to see on the 2022 models. And if you got any questions, please let us know. I love talking to you guys and we'll catch you on the next one.